We are welcoming Rainer Brehm, our CEO of Factory Hi. Automation Hi, from Digital Industries here on stage. Rainer, have you kind of um, perceived what, what we've been talking about? You all agree to that topic. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of the hottest topics we have anyway within Siemens. So I'm in constant um, exchange because things are really moving fast. And to stay up to date and you know, getting new techniques in, which we can apply on the shop floor, that's of fundamental importance. So we have the LinkedIn Live community still with us. We have a large audience here. It's great that you're joining. We will deep dive now into the topic of the Siemens Industrial Copilot and the benefit which it brings to the shop floor by using the power of generative AI. So, Rainer, thank you for coming up here to set the stage. Let's revisit the shared vision of the Industrial Copilot which was announced for the first time last year at Hanover Messe. How does the vision look like now, one year later? How far are we? Well, uh, I still remember when I was on the Microsoft booth uh, last year, where we you know, piloted what we did. So we leveraged the large language model and did the first use cases. And since then, one year, we really had a very fast development. On the SPS fair in November, we were already showing on a concrete machine with a concrete customer how it looks like to really generate PLC code, how to test it, you know, but also not only being in the engineering phase, but also going into operation phase. So that was done. I think now we're moving faster and faster, and you know, stay tuned on the press conference tonight. Mm -hmm. There will be also an announcement coming up. Uh, but we're also expanding now you know, from that initial engineering phase into the entire value chain, from a product design at the end to the service. Uli, Microsoft has gained the reputation as the co-pilot company. What's the story behind it? Well, as I said before, so if you have heard it before, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The idea is to democratize AI, really bring AI uh, into every role, every job, um, to effectively help humans do what humans do uniquely best and help um, bring machine capabilities in where machines really can um, help and make the difference. The advancements in AI, coupled with cloud computing, um, really allow us to put this capability into everybody's hands and make interaction with computers far more intuitive um, as a user interface. I would say for the first 50 years of computers, we wrapped ourselves around the way the computers worked. Mm -hmm. I think the next 50 years will be more like, OK, how do, does the computer effectively understand who we are, how we work, not only as humans, but how Rhino works, how Uli works, or how Peter works, because the computer has the ability now to hear, to understand, and to process that understanding um, based upon a generic understanding of human language, but also on your personal quirks. Sure, I'm sure you have a way to write email, you have a way to write documents, and the system can learn how to do that so they can effectively help you uh, still be you uniquely, but effectively uh, be effectively do uh, your job faster and ideally um, with less effort. Mm -hmm. So you can I'm, do more. I mean, sometimes I have to wonder about how clever this guy is, and sometimes I'm like, oh. So training is, is the topic here. And um, I mean, it's brilliant which advantages it definitely brings, as you say, saving time and, and really realizing more with less effort, as you say. So Raina, can you tell us why co-pilots are so crucial for the industry when we are talking about automation and the shop floor? Uh, maybe or picking up what, what Uli just said. You know, Gen AI is wrapping now around the person. What we try to do with Microsoft, we're wrapping it around the machine. We're wrapping it around the process. Mm -hmm. So we basically bring in that knowledge of a machine, of a process, how to operate it into that play, and wrapping around this one that we can optimize this, I think this is the way forward. And why is it so important? Because we see, I mean, everybody knows that, and Peter and, and Uli was also talking about it, the topic of lack of labor is definitely the most hindering factor for industrialization, and you want to do that close to the consumption. So there are mega trends why automation is necessary to really solve the topic of, of sustainability, of lack of labor, and the question is how we can make it as easy as possible, and how generic as possible, and therefore it's very, very important. 
We talked always about engineering efficiency. When we launched the Tier Portal 2011, it was all around engineering efficiency, which is efficient. But with Chen AI, we bring it on the next level. And that's the reason I'm so excited about it. <laughs> For good reasons. So how can I imagine the Copilot supporting humans in, in praxis? Um, what will it look like and what's already possible today? Well, um, you know, we look at the entire uh, value chain. And I give you some example on design phase. Um, I think today or tomorrow, there's going to be a, a press conference with Harting, Microsoft and Siemens. Okay. And what Harting did, they designed a connector using generative AI. So the product design is done via generative AI. So we are moving into, you know, how can you design new product using generative AI? That's on the design phase. We're working significantly how you do the factory planning, for example, with our tool process simulate, how a uh, pl plan simulate, how you're using generative AI to optimize um, setup. Then engineering for sure. I mean, that is where we started, at least from an automation side. It was very much in the engineering phase. Operations, I think Uli going to say something about it. I think very excited. And last but not least, also on the service side, you know, when you do a maintenance, and we show it here, uh, we have a SenseI solution where we integrated a co-pilot, where you now could doing a predictive maintenance and asking maybe, please gener generate a maintenance plan, and, and that's generated automatically based on real-time serious data where you know what is the condition of different assets and doing that optimization. So really linking the real-time shop floor data into this entire process. Quality of visualization, also a critical point in here? It, absolutely. I mean, looking at the engineering phase, um, so what we, what we have shown is, you know, generating code for PLC. And I, I like that because, you know, you could say, I need a triangular si um, um, signal and it's going to write it. It's going to document it, it's going to test it, and it's also going to simulate it in the future also very interesting. So not only testing it, but also simulating it in a virtual PLC. That's and, really cool. And doing that all together. Number one. Number two, we have one example, um, how you um, generate, for example, um, HMI screens. And we see that, that video here. So basically, you are saying, I want to have a certain HMI screen. And then uh, the co-pilot tells you know, how to break down a complex <coughs> problem into certain steps. We are starting using agents in, in that one as well. So basically, you have a complex topic. You break it down different steps. You can interact with the system. It's a one that takes a step out. Mm -hmm. And then it's generating here the tier portal. On, the, on, the, on that side, you see the tier portal. You're generating then the screen. And you see the buttons here are all, all gray. And in the past, you need to go to every button and change the button manually. You can say, no, the co-pilot, I want the button all in blue. And all are in blue. So that is really engineering FNG and also takes away kind of repetitive work, uh, which is not creating a lot of value. And I think this is why, why this whole thing is so interesting for the shop floor to really avoid this repetitive work and use those people you're having for, for better jobs and um, nicer tasks. Um, you mentioned Harting, good point. We will have a presentation on this stage on Wednesday, Microsoft and Harting and Siemens. And our press conference is at 5.30 tonight, this place here for one hour, so don't miss that chance to join us here as well. Now, Uli, Siemens partners with Microsoft to deliver co-pilots for the entire value chain, industrial value chain in that way. What is Microsoft's role in here and what can visitors um, experience at the Microsoft booth? Yeah, so Microsoft is a technology provider to Siemens for a long, 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 long time. Uh, I don't know what it is, 40 years, something like Probably. that, a long time. <laughs> and it has always been fantastic. But with AI, I think we're going to the next level. And I would say we start off with the uh, infrastructure that we provide. Microsoft actually runs AI supercomputers and supercomputing infrastructure so that if uh, Rhino needs even more capabilities, we have them available. Then we're working with innovative companies like OpenAI to offer the Azure OpenAI service, which takes their OpenAI innovation but provides this as an enterprise-grade, secure uh, capability. And then uh, I mentioned the responsible AI tools, um, enterprise-grade security, and so forth as a capability set. And 
in Siemens, Reiner and uh, his peers are taking this tool set and are bringing these industrial co-pilot capabilities. Um, the use case that Reiner sh uh, shared is one super cool capability, but we also work with Siemens uh, on another one. And in robotics, there is a concept called Moravex Paradox, which says that the user, a person, is great at doing certain things, and a robot is uh, great at doing uh, certain other things, but never the same. Mm -hmm. With um, generative AI, we are now starting to bring capabilities into the robotics area that allow the users and the robots to interact much better together. The scenario that we are showing in the Microsoft booth is a warehouse scenario. Um, so in the warehouse case, I understand that there is, in the US alone, 7.5 million skilled worker shortage uh, by 2030 or something like that. Okay. And that means we now have to figure out a way to get the job done with the people we have and then teach AI to pick and um, sort articles that effectively go on. With generative AI and ro in advancements in robotics, we can now have the robot interact with the worker uh, in, in, in normal language. It can be English, it could be Thai, it could be Vietnamese, whatever you like. With accents? Oh, absolutely, whatever you like, as I said. Um, and it, the robot, if it, for example, stops working, you normally, as a normal shop floor worker, would say, I need to call an engineer. Mm -hmm. Now the robot can actually say, well, I stopped working because a human uh, moved into my visibility space and I had to stop because I don't want to hurt the person and other scenarios like that. And the last element, which I think is really important, we also have a, not only a shrinking population in a lot of spaces, we also have an aging population. So we have users in the warehouse that are extremely well-skilled, long, a long time there, they know blindly what to do. Now, if you come in as a new person, you're kind of like, what is all this? How do I get up to speed? And the generative AI in the robot can actually become the partner for this new person to start learning how to do their job efficiently, fast and safe, which is in industrial settings another really important element. And so think about all of this and then closing the loop. If there are certain things that don't quite work as they should, the feedback loop can be closed with engineers at Peter and Reiner already mentioned, and PLC code can be generated to improve the function of the robot. So really thinking through how we figure out a way to bring the humans and the machines together safely, bring new people on board and close the loop uh, from the shop floor, meaning the people that really do the hard work, and the engineers that build the tools to help those shop floor workers. Mm -hmm. How long would you say does a process like this take? Is that a matter of um, weeks? months to train and get used to working with um, the co-pilot? Again, if, it depends on how the co-pilot is built. Mm -hmm. um, but because the co-pilot is using the way we would speak, uh, it should take hours, maybe a couple of days, depending on the complexity of the job. But it certainly shouldn't take weeks or months. Mm -hmm. So think hours and days rather than weeks and months. Which is great, definitely. Yeah, and, and I can confirm, even I'm now capable of doing it. Please. <laughs> within, within a short time. And you can go to the booth. I mean, you can show yes. it from the booth people how easy really that interaction is. So um, it's really <coughs> quite easy. And now I think the beauty of what, what, what Uli just said, you know, we, we're using Gen AI on the one side really to do, you know, on the aging society, on, on lack of labors but we're also using it to automate more than you have automated in the past. Mm -hmm. And that example of having a flexible grasping, a pick AI, where AI, where you don't program your automation, but you say, you have a goal, do this. And how it's done, it's done automatically by the system. Yeah? And that enhances what you can automate even more. Which is wonderful. So, uh, Rainer, there is some more exciting things we are going to show here at the fair booth. You want to uh, talk about that now, quickly? We've got one minute left. Well, yeah, what I just mentioned, there's a, yeah. a small robot which does easy things, but it's um, kind of taking something, putting something there. There's a lot of AI built in, AI on the picking, but also AI in the complete um, um, interaction using generative AI together with Microsoft. And what I also like always, this machine with Scheffler, where we really work in a co-creation with, uh, with, with one of our lead customers to define how we really bring it down to what is needed. 
not making fancy proof of concept, really how it helps a machine builder to build a machine and doing that operations, what Uli just said, you can see it on the machine, how to optimize the machine, how to diagnose the machine while it's operating. So I think that is one what is highlighted here. Yeah. I think you can see really the breadth of the design up to the maintenance yep. on that single machine. Mm -hmm. It's really worthwhile going there. The, the last piece I would add before I of let you course. finish um, is, because Rainer kind of triggered something, the other piece that's really cool with generative AI is that the machine actually can report back what it actually saw in real language, um, where you can simply say, I saw this element, it was a box square of this size and so forth. So you understand actually, oh yeah, the machine got it right. Uh, but very quickly, because we can read much faster mm -hmm. uh, than uh, understanding complex diagrams and so forth. Which is great. So the topic of trust, once again, is much easier to accomplish because you get immediate feedback. Wonderful. And trust, I think, is also the best word to describe what we're having here. A great partnership with great companies really developing something for the Industrial Revolution 5.0, I would say. Mm -hmm.